back to Mac Break Studio. If you haven't figured it out already, this guy loves 3D text and 3D titles. So we're gonna continue our discussion of Final Cut Pro slash Motion's awesome 3D title engine. And he has some, some tricks that he wants to show yes, us today. Yeah, yeah a, few tips and <clears throat> excuse, a few tips and trips for how to work with 3D text, whether it's our plugins or, or other, other ones, in. things you can do. And it's funny because you know, when I first saw the 3D text, I had the reaction some people do like, oh, like is this like Pro Animator or something? Which no, Pro Animator was fantastic back in the day. It's from Zach's work, Zach Stow did a beautiful, ver beautiful job on that. It was about 10 years old. It was like, is this just kind of simple? But the more I got into 3D text, the more I realized how the quality is so high that you can make things look so beautiful and the performance is so good that um, I really was shocked with what's possible. So I want to show a couple little extra things here. So by default, if you go to the titles browser, there is a 3D category of uh, titles in 10.2. And I'm going to show an example. I'm going to use this one called 3D Tumble. You can you know, skim it to see what it does. But I'm going to add it to the project uh, to show you by default if you use this guy. Some text comes in and it's got this nice default animation. And in the inspector, there's different options, a couple of different options for how it can animate. Uh, like I'll do this assemble, disassemble, and that's pretty cool. It works great. And you can change the speed of the animation. Uh, but one thing that occurs to me is after the text comes in, it just sits still. And this is something I've noticed like, okay, that's really cool, but I still want to see some motion going right, on. Some movement of some yeah. sort. And there's no, um, while you can change the position and rotation of 3D text in in the viewer, see I can move it and yeah. I can rotate it yep. pretty much any way I want, those position rotation parameters are not available in the title inspector. Nope. Okay? So that means they're not pre-frameable. So um, we make this set of free Ripple 3D title animations that are based on those but have a few more features that we've talked about earlier in an earlier episode. And what I want to show you here is with these, I have, um, I've already created a custom look with one of our 3D text styles, 3D title styles, and yes. I've saved as a favorite and applied here to this, this free um, super tumble. So we've got the same kind of tumbling animation. By the way, that looks cool. <laughs> it's kind of neat, yeah, huh? Yeah. So I'm using, I'm, I'm using one of our styles that has a moss look and it's backlit and with kind of a cool font. It looks kind of neat, especially you see how the light hits it, but nothing's happening in the middle. Right. So I want to show you, if you go to the inspector, now one option to do this, by the way, uh, if you if you don't want to use this, you can right click on any one of these built-in options, built-in templates, and choose open a copy in motion, and you can publish position and rotation. Which I did in a previous episode. Well, you did it with environment. Oh, I did it with environment. But right. it's the same idea. So you right. can right click and you can publish. Uh, but basically, I created these so you don't have to do that. Okay, because so, you've got this, and they have additional features like this automatically blurs the background, and it's got a lot more. Check out the animation options. There's a much longer list of of built-in animation sure. options. So, but what I want to do here is just um, add additional movement to this. So in order to do that, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to turn off the build in and build out. So right now, if I scrub, Just there's no it. animation, right? right? And then I'm going to decide what I want it to look like. I'm going to actually have it when it comes in, I'm going to have to come in more at an angle. The hero angle. Yeah, tilt it a little bit, something like that. And I'll go to the first frame, hit the up arrow, and I'm going to set a keyframe in the title inspector for both position and rotation. By the fault, these are closed. I'll click to set keyframes. So if I open these up now, X, Y, and Z will be keyframes. They'll all be oh, keyframed, right. right? And I'm purposely doing it at the very beginning. One of my tips is when you're doing keyframing, position, rotation, it's best to do them at the beginning and end of the entire animation. And the short reason for that is that um, position keyframes can be changed between linear and smooth. Rotation keyframes cannot. Ah, oh, that's a huge tip. Yeah, so I... Hence I, the name, 3D title yes. tips of this exercise. So I'm going to go to the end of right. it now, and I'm going to change those values. And what I'll do is I looked at what the original values were. And so while I did a minus 0.19, I won't do any position, but for rotation, it was minus 14.5. So I'll rotate it the other direction, about 15. And I also rotated this about 30 degrees, so I'll do minus 30 degrees. Uh, so now we have two ending, starting, and ending rotations. So if I play this thing back now, I'll select it, hit the forward slash key, and it starts out. The hero angle that you said. At that hero angle, yeah. And we've got this nice, slow, unfolding uh, it's very animation. Dramatic, very dramatic, yeah. It's very yeah, nice. and in fact, you might just stop there. You know, you might not want the built-in animation. Just use the, you've got a very nice animation right there. But what I'll do is I'll turn those build-in and build-outs back on again. 
Oh, you're combining your keyframes. Yeah, to combine with... those together. And now what we have is the text flies in and has a very nice animation in between. And then flies out. And then flies out again, yeah. Oh my gosh, that's great. So it looks pretty cool. It does. It does. Uh, one thing I would take it a little bit further, um, position keyframes are interpreted as uh, smooth by default. And you might not want that. You might, it's kind of a continuous movement. So I'm gonna hit Control V to open up the animation. And I'm gonna zoom in here. I'm gonna change, because these are both keyframes, you know, yeah, position there's, rotation. There's, yeah, there's two keyframes. There. I'm gonna choose position to make sure we're just working with position. And like, I'll right click on it and choose, uh, it's already set to linear, so I'm actually in good shape. But you can switch between linear and smooth here. If you're keyframing both position and rotation, uh, rotation's always smooth, so you might wanna choose smooth for position as well. So that's that's kind of big tip number here, number one here. So I'll go here and uh, if I go to rotation, uh, I've got rotation keyframes. If I right click on that, there's no oh, there's no smoother no no linear. option no option, which I would really love there to be. Uh, so the second hint I have, this is kind of cool. If I go in the middle and decide I don't really like the overall position, I can make a change to position in the viewer, and it will not add another keyframe. It okay? should. Well. This is the interesting thing. Changes to position in the viewer do not set a keyframe. Changes to rotation will set a keyframe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I know, I know. We, we, a, we, are, we a, have an acronym yeah. where I come from. Yeah. Welcome to Flagstaff. <laughs> yeah. So I just well, want to change the right. right, right. What, right. what the heck? Right. So <laughs> let's say I just, want to, I just want to move this whole thing back in space a little bit. Uh -huh. I can do that. And we see that no keyframe has been set there. Okay, right. so that didn't that just changed the overall position of the whole animation without setting a keyframe, which is kind <laughs> of useful. Right. I find that useful. It's good to know. But if I do a rotation instead, so I'm going to do a rotation uh, like this. No, you see the keyframe just appeared. Yes, I just. Yeah. So that added a keyframe with rotation. So now if I play back, it goes in, and now it's going to go through this little additional rotation there. It wasn't very much of one. Let me do something. It, it was more subtle. I like subtlety. It. Yeah, you can see you it. Totally see it. So it added another keyframe. So it's important to know that that if you want to adjust rotation, you're going to want to move to the keyframe, and you don't want to add a keyframe. You need to move to an existing keyframe and change it. Uh, then change it. Got okay. It. So um, <laughs> just a couple tips on how to deal with it. So now I've got a nice combination of the two, and uh, this particular plugin allows you to change the timing of everything. There's a retiming for in and out. But for even more control, this is my final little tip on this, is if you really want a great deal of control, you can press Option G to make this as a compound clip. And oh, because could, it's a compound clip. You could change the speed, play with the speed yeah, exactly. and the timing. So you can go into, um, you can do like a blade speed. So you could say, OK, I want this to come in. Really fast or whatever. And then I'll do Shift B for a blade speed. And then I'll go to where it's going to come out. And I'll do another Shift B. And now that I've done that, let's zoom in a little bit. I can say, well, I want this thing to come in like super fast. I'm going to have it come in four times as fast, and I want it to go out slower. So I'll slow it down by 50% to come out. And then we can see how these blend into each other with these little handles. Little blend bars. Yeah, you've done, uh, yeah. So I don't know what we call those little guys. Speed but ramping. Ease, speed ramps. Okay. Yeah, easing and easy out. So now it flies in really okay. quick, plays at 100% through here. And then there's a nice slow exit. Oh my gosh, that's so, great! It really gives you full now control that, that, over the you, animation. You left, you know, that that was a huge payoff. Waiting for that good. at the end, that okay. was a good payoff, sir. Okay. <laughs> so a few tips for how you can um, add your own keyframes to animating 3D text in right. Final Cut Pro 10.2. But of course, you want to do it by downloading the free plugin yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, from FX Factory, which you should be doing because like he's got all these, he spent all this time putting all the features in there. Excellent. Yes. Excellent demo, Mark. Thanks awesome. for thanks for showing that to us. Um, if you're interested in more, visit rippletrain.com. You can get to FX Factory directly from our site or straight straight away from FX Factory. Um, we do under five episodes on motion mass break and Mac break studio, and every week, every, every week, week we, we do a new movie. Every, movie. Week. every week we do a new movie. <laughs> so you want to check that out and follow us on Twitter. Um, thanks again, Mark, for for creating such a great great plugin that help that really help people out. And thank you for watching another episode of MacBreak Studio.